sorry. If articles were oiled with unclean oil and were oiled again with clean oil, or if they were oiled with clean oil and were oiled again with unclean oil, Reb Eliezer says, I go after the first, but the comments say, I go after the last. If leaven of truma said of kilal karam fell into dough, and if neither of these suffices to leaven nor that suffices to leaven, but together they leavened, it is forbidden to non priest but permitted to priest, and Reb Shimon permits to non priest and to priest. Condiments of truma and kilal karam, which fell into a pot, and neither of these suffice to flavor nor to suffice to flavor, but together they flavored, it's forbidden to non priest but permitted to priest. Reb Shimon permits, permits to non priest and to priest. Okay. Um, so, you, sorry, did did you just do the 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 saor or the tavlin, the the the, the sauda or the spices? Uh, I just did the condiments. Okay, no, that's great, perfect. Okay, because the two the two mishnahs are like basically identical yeah, except for right. the subject matter. And once again, um, tesain is a, also very a very similar subject matter. Right. Uh, shel kodshe kodshem. So you've got a small piece of, uh, of, of meat from the Kodshe Kodshim, let's say from a khatas, okay, um, where, a, where you know, a Kohanim can eat the, the meat of a, of a khatas. Okay, and, another, and, and, an, and then another piece that was uh, pigul or nosar, which is uh, obviously asr for anyone. Okay, and And these two pieces got cooked together with, uh, with regular cholin meat. Okay, so what do you got? You two got two forms of iser. One is a form of iser that's uh, that's asr to everybody, and one is a form of iser that is only asr to, uh, to non koanim. Okay, so says the says the uh, says the Tana, asr lazarim mutar la koanim. So this is uh, once again, it's um, it's the koanim are allowed to eat because the only thing that's asr to them in there is the is the pigul or nosar. And the uh, and that wasn't enough to give flavor to the whole mixture, but uh, um, but but for for non kwanim the koche kochim is also there and it also makes the shear. So again, it's the same. It's exactly the same principle applied. And once again, Rabbi Shimon dissents. Is he who he permits it to both because he says they're different categories of iser. Therefore, they do not combine. Okay. okay. Um, so uh, Mishnah Yud Zion. Is uh, is a slightly different case. Basa koche kochim basa kochim kalim. So now here we have um, we have uh, say chatas meat. Basa kochim kalim from a shlamim. You got meat from a shlamim. Shenis bashlo im basa taiva. And now these got cooked together with basa taiva. Uh, with in other words, regular chulin meat. So again, each one by itself is not enough to impart flavor, but together they they will impart flavor. Okay, now the, 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 the boundary line between the two is, is changed because, uh, because even for a non kohen a non kohen is allowed to eat shlamim. So we, we should say that, uh, that, he, that, that it's mozart for him because there's not enough, there's not enough koche kochim in there to asr it for him. Okay, so what does the, the Mishnah make the distinction? It says asr la or So if somebody's tame, then they can't eat either because somebody's tame is not allowed to eat shlamim. So, um, so therefore, between the two of them, it makes everything uh, it makes everything us. Um, however, if it's um, uh, if it's if for somebody's tahor and is allowed to eat the shlamim, then there's no iser at all, and uh, because the the koche kochim is, uh, is is too small to make a difference to him. Okay, um, uh, Perik Gimel, bege chitzava o beklipe orla. So now returning back to the subject of orla itself. So um, you have every we said everything about the about orla uh, the orla fruit is asr, not just the edible parts of the fruit. Okay, it's so even the peels uh, are are also asr. So let's say um, you've got uh, rimon and there's uh, and and the, and the husks of the rimon can be used for dyeing. Right. Okay, can so what? Can you what? Can the husks what? of the rimon can be used for dyeing. Dying. Okay. All right. Okay. So, so here you've got a um, a garment that was dyed with the with the husks of uh, of of a, an orla rimon. 
So what, uh, what's the din of that? Well, the whole thing is now Asa Bahana and you have to burn it. Okay. Now what happens if this garment that was dyed with illegally and is Asa Bahana, and this garment now became mixed up with other garments? So Rabbi Mer says, well, the, the, the garment is Chashuv. And it's like, a, it, it, remember the thing, we said, you know, if you have the steak, the, the, the trafe steak that's mixed up with all the other steaks, so you can't, there, there's no bits all there. Right. So Rabbi Mary says the same thing goes for this garment. The Chachamim say, let it be nullified uh, 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 one in, in 200. Because it's uh, because it, it you know it's not it, they don't hold like Rabbi Meir that it's uh, that it's so uh, Um Now the halacha follows the chachamim. Why is it not chashuv? Um, I seem to recall. No. No. So there's it might be an interesting diuk to one to say like why is it not considered that the thing itself is chashuv? If you recall. We said in Kashras that let's say you have, um, if you have a, a kosher steak that was left to soak in, uh, let's say, pig juice of some sort. Okay. So the steak itself, the meat itself did not become aster. It's just that it's so, it's, it's so full of, of trave, of iser, that, it, uh, that you wouldn't be allowed to eat it. And then that steak got mixed up with a, with a bunch of other steaks. There we don't say that... Um, that's the uh, that it's a chaticha royal is covered because the, the steak itself for etzim is kosher. It's just that, that there's something absorbed in it that's treif, and therefore you can apply bittel to it. Okay, yeah, you can you can apply bittel to that case. What you cannot do is if the steak itself is treif, for example, if it was cooked in milk, or if it comes from a novella, then if the steak for etzim it's uh, is treif, then we say chaticha royal is covered. You cannot. Um, uh, and you, uh, um, and therefore there's no bittel for it even even in a thousand. And so I was wondering if, if this might be similar, and I'm gonna and I, and it's actually not. I was thinking that yeah, the, the clothing itself is okay. It's just that the the dye is the problem. The problem that right, that's the one that's going to mess it up. So, but but I, but that can't be the case because then if if that were the case, then it should be bottle barov, and not not in in a majority. It should be bottle in a majority, not in two hundred. Not in 200. Uh, no, it should, it should, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't even need 200 against it if what I'm saying is right. So it okay. seems like the, the garment itself, but it does become Asr, but it's vital like anything else in, in Orla uh, in 200. Okay. Um, back to the beginning of Orla. Okay. <laughs> That's strange about the husk. All right. I we have um, Aleph Aleph. If one plants for a fence or for beams, it is exempt from Orla. Rabbi Yossi says even if he said the inner side for food and the outer side is a fence, the inner side is liable and the outer is exempt. When our forefathers entered the land and found planted, it was exempt. If they plant it, although they had not conquered, it is liable. If one plants for the public, it is liable. Rabbi Huda exempts. If one plants in the public domain, or if a non-Jew planted, or if a robber planted, or if it planted on a ship, or if it grew out of itself, it's liable to Orla. If a tree was, supported, was uprooted together with a rock, or a river swept it away with the rock, it could live. And if, if it could live, it is exempt. If it not, it's liable. If the rock was torn away from its side, or the plow shook it, or it shook it and made it like earth, if he could live, it is exempt. It is not liable. Okay. Okay. If the rock was torn away from its that, side, that, the rock doesn't live. This it's, not, it's not the rock. The, so the rock is, uh, is, 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 is not Muduyak. It's the, it's the, it's the clod of, of earth that, that's around the roots. That's what they're calling the rock over here. So if it's right. sufficient that the, that the, that the tree would, would survive without being replanted, then, there's no, then, then you don't reset the clock. But if, it's, if it has lost the soil and, and now you have to replant it for it to survive, then you reset the oil clock. Okay, Master Shani Aleph Vav. If one bought cattle in error, the money must be returned. If, if uh, wittingly, it must go up and be eaten in the place. 
but when there is no temple, it must be buried together with its hide. If one may not buy bondsmen, bondwomen, land, or unclean animals with my Shashani money, and if he bought the, he must eat for its ill equivalent. One may not offer bird offerings of men or women who had a flux, or bird offerings of women after childbirth, or sin offerings and guilt offerings bought with my Shashani money. And if one offered them, he must eat their equivalent. This is the general rule. Anything other than food, drink, or uh, augment, uh, 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 yeah, <laughs> has been bought with my Shashani money, its value must be consumed. My Shashani serves for eating, drinking, and anointing with oil. For, and for eating, which is usually what is usually eaten, and for anointing that which is usually to anoint. One may not use for anointing wine or vinegar, but may anoint with oil. One may not spice my sashani oil, or may new, or, nor may one buy spiced oil with my sashani money. However, one may spice wine or honey or spice felt if, if honey or spice fell into it and increased its value. The increased value is according to the proportion. The fish was cooked with my sashani leek, and it increased in value. The increased value is according to the proportion. If my sashani dough is baked and increased in value, the increased value is attributed to my sashani. This is the general principle. Where, there is an, where the increase is recognizable, the increase is according to the proportion. But where the increase is not recognizable, the increase belongs to my sashani money. And there was okay. one point. That That's it. It's... Uh... One point I went to... to, to an, uh, Um, one, all right, all right, I, I see it. Okay, all right. Okay, you got it. I have it, I have Kill it. I am, hey Zion. If while passing through the vineyard comes some seeds fell from him or dropped with the manure or with the water, if while sowing the wind blew it behind him, it's permitted. If the wind blew it before him, Rabbi Akiva says, if blades, if blades, it must be plowed up, and if it, and if in ear, it must be beaten, and if it produced torn, it must be burnt. And we had the whole thing in planting when we we were doing. I can never remember where they are. But we're doing this whole thing where it, where it was that if you were, you were throwing seeds on the ground, then it was behind you, or the wind was blowing behind you or in front of you. Yes, yes, and that's it's here. If, if um, where is that? I'm in the wrong place here. Should be um, Hess? Hess, yeah. All right, Hess, I got it. Okay. If one retains thorns in a vineyard, Reb Eliezer said it is rendered forbidden. But the Bacomans say it is not written forbidden. Only such things like the like of which are retained, iris, ivy, king's lily, and all kinds of seeds are not kalayim in a vineyard. Hemp, Rabbi Tarfin says it is not kalayim, but the Bacomans say it is kalayim. The artichoke is kalayim in a vineyard. What is an iris? One, if one plants a row of five vines behind a fence ten, uh, ten spokum high and beside a ditch ten spokum deep and four wide, it is given its tillage space of four amos. Beit Shammai said one must measure four amos from the body of the vines to the field. But Beit Hillel says from the fence to the field. Bibi Yochanan ben Nuri said all who say so are mistaken. Only if those are four amos from the roots of the vines to the fence, it is given tillage space, and the rest may be sown. And how much of the tillage space of the vine? Six flakum in every direction. Rabbi Akiva says three. A okay, para gimel base. There were courtyards in Jerusalem built on bedrock, and beneath them was a hollow because of concern for a grave of the deep. And they would bring pregnant women, and they would give birth there, and they rear their children there. And they would bring oxen with doors on their backs, and the children would sit on top of them with cups of stone in their hands. When when they would reach the spring of uh, Sholak, Shiloh. All right, come on. Shiloach. Shiloach, I know. The children would descend and fill their cups, and they would then descend, ascend and sit on top of the doors. Rabbi Yossi says, from this, the place the child would lower the cup and fill it. Yeah, all the, all the, the, the extreme measures that they are taking to uh, make sure that the, that the, um, the, the children don't become tame, that they never became tame. And that, uh, and that when they're drawing the water, there should be no, no, no danger of any kind of tumor. 
But were those the same boys they used to put the oil in the um, in the in the menorahs? Those the same? There was no there was no requirement that they be so good about the uh, the 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 tara at that point. No, uh, I mean, they have to be tower, but uh, but for the paraduma, everything is like way off the scale of of, of right. precautions. It's interesting. Are they saying here that the the, um, the courtyards? And they would bring pregnant women and they would give birth so there. so 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 the so the pregnant woman is going to give birth inside a place where it's not possible for there to be any tumor that's what i was wondering about because it, it because they were talking about first that there, there could be a graveyard but there's a hollow beneath it the hollow beneath keeps the keeps the tumor uh the, the tumor underneath it there's a uh 21 what do you want to call it uh that pregnant women should not go to a, a cemetery you know something like that i think there's something like that yeah, I've I've heard that, um, and it's a it's a superstition. I think it's, a it's a complete it's a complete So there's no there's no halacha that says that pregnant women can't go. But yeah, there's a, there, there is a halacha that that a an ashes kohen shouldn't go to the cemetery, because uh, because a child uh, is uh, might be a boy. Even yeah. so, even so, her body does shield him from the tumor, but uh, but is that. But my daughter was going to give birth, you know, like uh, 20 so odd years ago. Some friend of hers said something. All right, now listen, I heard this whole thing. It's a big thing that you open all the kitchen cabinet doors and drawers when she's on her way to the hospital. So my wife said, what, are you kidding me? What? Yeah, open all the kitchen cabinets and the drawers. It's like a school of having, you know, everything should be well. You know, I know what? we had the same reaction, you know. <laughs> I have no idea where it came from. Yeah. And this was in Far Rockaway, which is a pretty, you know, from community. So ah, uh, all the kinds of nourish guide that that creep into <laughs> into our, <laughs> into our practices. Cool, you should tell Rabbi Haber to see what his expression is. You know. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, this one, this came. They came to the Temple Mount and descended beneath the Temple Mount, and for its courtyards was a hollow because of concern for grave of the deep. And at the at entrance of the courtyard was installed a jug of chatos ashes, and they brought a male sheep and tied a rope between its horns, and they tied the other end of the rope to a stick and wrapped the rope around it and threw the stick into the jug. And, and they hit the male sheep, which sprang backward, and he took the ashes and consecrated the water, using enough ashes so as to be visible on the surface of the water. Gibyosi says, do not give the Zadjuchis room to hold sway over us. Rather, he took the ashes from the jug and consecrated the water. Right. So, Sir so is saying this is this this whole ritual is, is ridiculous. You uh, that that you don't nobody wants to touch the jug in case somebody might be tame and they mess up the paradoma ashes. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that they've got this whole this, this whole uh, contraption, a Rube Goldberg machine with a with the, uh, the 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 branch is stuck into the thing. It can't be tame, and they and they attach it to the sheep, and the sheep gets a fright and it pulls it out and yanks out the ashes and. Uh, yeah. Just Rabbi Yossi, the, 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 the Tzedukim are making fun of us for doing this, just do it normally. They would not prepare katatos by means of a different katos or a child by means of his friend. And the children needed to be sprinkled through uh, these words. Uh, these are the words of Rabbi Yossi Agili. Mm. And Rabbi Yossi says they did not need to be sprinkled. Maybe the person who told my wife that, that uh, thing about the, the uh, cabinet doors in the kitchen, maybe she was a Shaduki. I don't know, maybe. You know. <laughs> You never know. All right, where is uh, Hey, um, um, hey. hey. If he intended to eat an olive's volume of the offering outside and an olive's volume tomorrow, or an olive's volume tomorrow and an olive's volume outside, for he intended to eat half a volume olive's volume outside its area and half an olive volume tomorrow, or half a volume tomorrow and half an olive's volume outside the area, it's invalid. But it bears no carrot punishment. Said Rabbi Yehuda, this is the rule. If the intent of time preceded the intent of place, it is pigal, or one is liable to carrots for it. But if the intent of place preceded the intent of time, it is invalid and bears no carrots. But the Chachamim say in either case it is valid but bears no carrots. If one intended to eat half an olive's vayim and to burn upon the altar half an olive's vayim, it is valid because eating and altar burning are not combined. It's yeah, so just it's worthwhile just uh, saying outside the difference between Rabbi Yehuda and, and Chachamim. That Rabbi Yehuda says once the shame pigle has fallen onto something, it stays pigle. Whereas Chachamim say no, it can have pigle removed if it has some other psul that comes into it, and then it's no longer called pigle and there's no more karis. And it's still pasul, but it's uh, it's not karis. 
If any disqualified person is slaughtered, their slaughter is valid, because slaughter is valid when performed by a non kohen by women, by slaves, and by persons who are tummy. Even in regard to the one's ho most holy offerings, provided though those who are tummy do not touch the meat. Therefore, they invalid, invalidate with intent. If any of these receive the blood from beyond its time or outside its place, if there is yet some life blood, a qualified person should again receive blood. If a qualified person received the blood and handed it to a disqualified person, he should return it to the qualified person. If he received the blood with his right hand and put it in his left hand, he would return it with his right hand. If he received it in a sacred vessel and poured it into a non-sacred vessel, he should pour it back into the sacred vessel. If he spilled it from the vessel onto the floor and he gathered it up, it's valid. If he applied it to the ramp but or not opposite the altar base, or if he applied that which should be applied to the lower part of the altar above, or that which should be applied to the upper part below, and he applied that which should be applied within the sanctuary on the outside, or that which should be applied on the outside, within it there is yet stone blood, life blood, a qualified person should again receive blood. If one slaughtered a sacrifice with the intent to... No, that's it. We've done, we've done three. And Tubas. If one supports his wife through a third party, he may not give her less than two kavim of wheat or four kavim of barley. Said Reb Yossi, no one provided her with barley except Reb Yishmael, who was near Edom. He must give her half a kav of beans, half a log of oil, half a kav of dried figs or manna of pressed figs. If he has none, he must provide her in their stead with produce, produce of another kind. He must give her a bed, a mattress, and a mat. He must give her a veil for her head, a girdle for her loins, shoes for fest from festival to festival, and clothes worth 50 zoos from year to year. She may not be given new ones in the summer, nor worn ones in the winter, but must be given clothing worth 50 zoos in the winter and clothe herself with them when they are worn out in the summer, and the worn out clothing is hers. He must give her a silver ma for her needs, and she eats with him on the night of every Sabbath. If he does not give her a silver, a silver ma for her needs, her handiwork is hers. What must she do to hit for him? The weight of five selim of warp in uh, Judea, which equals ten selim in Galil, or the weight of ten selim of wood in Judea, which equals twenty selim in, Gal in the Galil. If she was nursing, they decrease her handiwork requirement and add, her, add to her food. When does this apply? In the case of the poorest in Israel, but in the case of the wealthy, everything is according to his wealth. A woman's findings in her handbreadth belong to her husband, and her herons he enjoys the usurp during her lifetime. Restitution for her degrace and impairment belongs to her. Rabbi Yehuda ben Sa'ara says, when it is a hidden place, two-thirds belong to her and one-third to him. But when it is in the open, two-thirds belong to him and one-third to her. His, his share is given to him immediately, but as for hers, land is bought with it, and he must enjoy the usurp. Us, 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 us. Right. Because that's, that's one of the standard conditions of the of the marriage is that what that her property is um, is handed over to him as a as a guardian and he gets to enjoy the Paris. Okay. Okay. Have a couple of minutes or not? Uh, 